Howdy YouTubians. I wanted to show you my latest toy. Um, if it looks vaguely familiar but not really familiar to um, cylinder phonograph aficionados, that's because it's uh, a cylinder phonograph that uh, is in a custom cabinet. <clears throat> this is the Edison Standard B cylinder phonograph and from the serial number on it it was made around 1905. It's the Model B. It has the two and four minute combination cluster installed in it. I purchased it on eBay. I got it dirt cheap. It was just uh, the motor works. It had the motor, the bed plate, and the upper works. Uh, it didn't have a reproducer. I was able to find a uh, Model C <coughs> reproducer that was broken and I was able to fix it. Basically entailed replacing the gaskets, cleaning it up, and the uh, uh, weight limiter screw was bent. I straightened that up and uh, it works fine. The sapphire stylus is in very good shape. Alright, but the uh, machine was not in <coughs> good shape. It had a broken spring it was filthy, it was gummed up, and uh, so I had to repair the spring. Let me show you the guts of it. I think this is the most beautiful and perfect cylinder phonograph motor that's ever been made. It's just my personal opinion. There are others that may be better. There are others that are definitely uh, stronger with multiple spring motors. But this is just beautiful. To me, this is aesthetically perfect, and, uh, and it works fine. As I said, the, when I purchased it, the spring was broken, <coughs> and it was broken in a very bad place, um, very close to the <coughs> close to the center hub, and it's really wound tight there. However, I was able to repair it by riveting the uh, pieces together, and I'll show you how I did that. <coughs> let's uh, let's run the thing. First of all, I'll just show how the thing works now. Okay, uh, those of you in the uh, cylinder phonograph community are very familiar with this. I don't have to explain anything as to how it works. I made the belt out of duct tape. Thank you, uh, Benjamin J., for uh, your education on that. <coughs> the two four-minute combination, it uh, wants to slide out of two-minute mode. That's why I made this little bracket here. I'll show you. You should be able to see... I pull this bracket out. It's in two minute now. It wanders out of that uh, toward the four minute and goes into a neutral position. Not a good thing. <coughs> if I stick it in four minute mode, it runs fine. I have a Model H reproducer, but the stylus is broken, so I'm working on that. So for the time being, I want this two minute only, and I've got to keep it in two minute mode. So to do that, I just put this little bracket in, screwed it in, kind of loose, there it is, and it works perfectly in two minute mode. What a beautiful little motor. It's just, just gorgeous. I love that thing. Got to be careful and make sure the carriage doesn't flop back onto the feed screw. It does have the feed screw cover, which is nice. I purchased that separately. Spins like a top. There goes the carriage. <clears throat> As I said, <coughs> I uh, custom made the cabinet. I didn't have any cabinets. It didn't come with a cabinet. So I had some spare, some scrap oak and poplar, and so made my own cabinet. And I'm real happy with it. I think it's pretty. Looks vintage. That escutcheon is a uh, washer. A five eats washer. There are the brackets, the hinges. That's the uh, screw that holds the little retaining block in. After I uh, repaired the spring, I have wound this thing hundreds of times, really, uh, just over and over and over, mostly just to play with it. And uh, it's smooth as can be. Tell you that. Wind it a few times, 
and there it goes. Throw it in motion again. <coughs> Sorry, I'm battling this flu that's, <coughs> that's going around. Let's stop the thing. Let's put it back into operating position. Alright, cool. Let's throw a record on it. And we'll go with Red Wing. Number 1366 duet, Stanley and Burr. It's an indestructible record. I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's got a couple of skips in it. It does play well. <clears throat> I also made uh, a Walmart transmission fluid funnel and uh, brass coupling. I wanted a kind of a short horn. So um, I did it this way. This is like a one inch or one and a quarter or whatever to half inch reducing coupling. I think you can see it inside there. I just uh, put that in, cut the funnel to shape, <clears throat> and it makes an absolutely perfect horn. So let's play this thing, at least a bit of it. Red Wing. thing. I have an Amberola Model 30. I have a Dictaphone um, machine. I think it's a Model 10A or something. I uh, use that for recording and for uh, playback of uh, Dictaphone brown wax cylinders. I have an Edaphone dictation machine. <coughs> By far my favorite toy is this little standard. I love these things. Just a beautiful little uh, phonograph. All right, cool. I told you that the uh, the spring was broke when I bought it. I had never taken a spring out of one of these things. Uh, you know, I was scared of pulling it out. I've watched the YouTube videos. I've watched the wrong way to do it, and I've watched the right way to do it. Um, after considerable uh, thinking about it, I chose to do it the right way, uh, just simply being very careful with the thing. It was actually no problem. It took me a couple of minutes to uh, dismantle <clears throat> the barrel from the motor works. A couple more minutes to pull the spring out. <clears throat> and uh, the hard part, of course, was doing the repair. <clears throat> I don't have a video of that because I didn't know what I was doing at the time and was just too concerned about doing it. But I'm going to just give you a, a representation with this cardboard here. So basically, uh, you know, this should have winding and winding and winding of spring, but I'll show you how it was broke. Uh, it was very close to the center hub, <clears throat> and the uh, pieces were broke like this, just ripped. It was like razor sharp. So what I did on both sides <clears throat> was to scribe a straight line with a, a Dremel tool grinder and uh, because it's tempered it will fracture easily so once I scribed the line I was simply able to break it I'll use the scissors here but break it straight okay so that side I uh, ground and then cut this side of the spring 
I ground uh, a straight edge on it, broke it off, not with scissors of course, just snapped, it snapped right off. <clears throat> now I had these two uh, parts here to deal with, the inner and the outer portions. Okay, I was going to overlap them in order to put a couple of rivets that I made out of small nails. Thank you again, Benjamin J., <coughs> for guiding me through this process. All right, you can't just drill into spring steel. You can, but you'll ruin bits. They'll wander. They'll just have no fun whatsoever. So in order to do it, you have to remove the, um, the tensile strength of the spring in a narrow place. So I took a torch. <coughs> it's called annealing. I softened the uh, ends about this deep, about like that, to red hot, all right? And I maintained that red hot condition for a couple of minutes. I did it on both sides of the spring and on both pieces, all right? So that I got both of these red hot and then let them cool to room temperature just leaving them alone don't dip them in water don't quench it uh, that'll make it even uh, uh, stronger you don't want to do that get both sides red hot <clears throat> and then leave it and do it indoors the reason that you want to do that is you don't want to have any wind any breeze you want still air let it do its own thing and um, and cool to room temperature. Once uh, once that's accomplished, then you can drill a couple of holes. <clears throat> the holes have to be just big enough to allow your two little nails to go through. All right. <clears throat> so once I drilled two holes here. Now this is difficult. We're talking about spring steel that doesn't want to deviate from this. So I literally had to pull these out and get them on a flat surface. It's difficult, but it's doable. This is the first time I played with something like this and I was able to get good results. <clears throat> the bottom line is, and I think if I recall, I did one at a time. I drilled two holes in this one. I lined this up, drilled through this hole, drilled through this hole, so that I now had through holes for both. <coughs> the, <coughs> sorry, the main thing to be careful of, it has to be straight across. It can't be cocked one way or the other, and it can't be misaligned this way. It has to be just like that. How you do it, you know, I thought of making jigs and such. I was just able to hold it down on my uh, vise, my bench vise. All right. I think actually I may have put like a block of wood, a thin block of wood on the bench vise so that I had a very narrow thing to hold these against. Really have to hold them and really not try to worry too much about bending it out of shape. You're likely not going to bend it out of shape if you're careful what you do. So I drilled two holes, right? I put two nails through that. Now the nails were uh, cut <coughs> so that you have the nail head on one end and a very small bit sticking out. Just enough so that you can take this and peen it down. Make a rivet out of it. You hammered it down. And I got them as flat as possible. Once I did that, it sprung back into place. All right, so it ends up kind of like this. I was able to put it back in the uh, in the uh, barrel after lubricating it uh, thoroughly, and very gingerly, after I installed it back in the motor, wound it up, and lo and behold. It wound perfectly. So <clears throat> I saved about 
I don't know, 40 or $50. I learned something new. I learned how to anneal spring steel. A uh, real sense of accomplishment. As a result, <clears throat> a working cylinder phonograph. All right, another thing that I made, aside from uh, <clears throat> the Benjamin J. Um, inspired Walmart transmission fluid funnel horn, I made a listening tube. All right, made a listening tube out of a mechanics stethoscope. I bought at Harbor Freight for $3. <clears throat> A length of braided fuel hose, uh, a uh, half inch brass coupling here, a needle valve to control the volume, gotta have that. You throw this thing on the reproducer, you uh, stick it in your ears and plug it in real good <clears throat> and run it without a volume control, you're gonna blast your eardrums out. Um, having said that, I uh, bought all this stuff for a few dollars at Lowe's Home Improvement. <clears throat> Stuck it in there, placed it to my ears, and it was a revelation. As been described before by Benjamin J. and perhaps others, um, what you're hearing coming out of these earbuds <clears throat> is the music as it was recorded. You have no artifacts. You don't have uh, any of the artificial artifacts from any horn. This is sound going directly from the stylus into the earphones, and you'll be amazed at how wonderful it sounds. Um, I don't know if you can hear it. You probably can. Let's play some more. Turn the volume up a little bit. I don't know if you can hear that. But boy, I tell you what, I'm listening with the earphones right now. It's so pretty sounding. Cool. Benjamin J. sells these, and uh, he makes a beautiful one. <coughs> but if you want to make your own, there you go. A few dollars, and you have uh, your own personal uh, set of earbuds uh, for <coughs> 1905. Edison Standard Model B. Hope you enjoyed. Have a nice day.